Hi, I'm Robert Dutton, North Yorkshire artist, and uh, today we're going to be using Unison Colour Pastels, and we're also going to be using these magnificent, beautiful inks here, these acrylic inks, together with these most amazing large brushes. And all of this material together, we're going to create for you a wonderful scene, a summer view of this magnificent river. So here's our scene. It's fantastic, really. We've got this great bend in the river, and that's what we're going to concentrate. That classic S shape and all of these really beautiful dark reflections. We're going to ignore the sheep, but uh, it does give a rather serene look to it. And we're going to concentrate on all this glorious deep darks and these fantastic lights. OK, so what we're doing now is we're getting everything in place with a little bit of drawing. Everything backs up with drawing. So uh, whatever you do as an artist, that's uh, what it is. And remember the S shape I talked to you about? We want to get that kind of like into the painting at the moment. That's our guide. So we're getting everything in place with this Derwent graphite pencil. It's a graphitone. It's water soluble. So it will infuse into the work. So let's just work with the whole pencil on its side. I peeled some of the wrapper off so that I've got much more of a head of a pencil rather than a tiny point with uh, an ordinary graphite pencil. Graphite sticks are much better. The graphitone, which is the dome one, is water soluble. I want it to infuse into the work when we start working with inks. You can see how that works. I'm just going to dip it into a little bit of water. We're building up our tones here in the fantastic shadows. The smooth paper will be wonderful to watch the inks uh, flow. There's a beautiful green in this scene, of course, because it's summer and it's high key. So I'm just using some inks. We put them into these containers. All they are are the bottom of milk bottles, the plastic ones you get from the supermarket. Cut the bottom off, put them in, and you can mix your inks together like so until you've got the right consistency. I'm spraying it with a spritzer. A little bit of clean water, you can see the graphite is already beginning to run, which is fantastic. The reason why I dampen the sheet is because I allow the inks to be able to take to the surface. If it wasn't, it would just completely run off. This allows some moisture to settle in, and then we'll get all these diffuse marks. As with watercolour, we can start with light to dark, and we can intermix all the different colours. You can already see how the graphite's working. So I'm using a big brush, and I'm allowing beautiful sweeping marks to take hold. Look how that works in there. Pick a bit more water up, keep it nice and slow. Use the flicky part of that brush to really work. The reason why we're working vertically as well is so that the reflections will automatically fall for us into our fantastic river. Notice I'm using the side of the brush. I'm only choosing this one colour at the moment. We'll dive into others. And don't you worry about all these drips and things like that because that's important to the subject. Down here, these flicking marks this is all about this expression of summer and you can see the build of the foliage already having fun in the studio aren't we that's what it's about right so switch very quickly using the same brush using dark the inks in there they've been slightly diluted as well let's concentrate on those in the middle so you can see the graphite moving into the paint allowing that to work we can dip directly with a large brush straight into the ink because we have a damp surface. And dragging the brush across the top, we're accelerating some of that reflection. If it doesn't, you can use the spritzer again and force the inks on the surface to drop down. It's about drawing at this stage as well, so going in quite tight using the tip of the brush, which is fantastic, and anything on the side to pick and express the texture. 
We can't forget our warm colours as well, the complements to green, which are the reds. I'm actually using a mixture here between uh, the translucent burnt sienna and also some yellow ochre. You can see I've mixed it up in the container using a large brush. You can actually sweep. It's almost like acts like a rubber and places that way through. So you'd be rapid with these marks. Keeping the board vertical again, that's the best way. Back in the background, you can already see these fantastic reflections. Don't forget the warmth, which is filtered light, passing through here, has a little bit of tint. Working great with those greens. Warm colours advance, and of course, there's uh, some beautiful pinks in the bottom corner. So what I'm doing here, again, with that large brush, mixtures of burnt sienna and crimson, allowing the paint just to sweep its way through. Complement again, the green, intermixing, so you get these neutrals in the middle. Carry a little bit of that through there. We've got the pink willow herb. They're great to actually add. So we're almost ready to take it on to the next stage. This is an exciting stage of the foundation of the painting that's setting it all up beautifully to be able to use our unison colour on the top. I'm actually dipping directly into the ink here with the pipette and drawing with it. And this allows me a great deal of control, even though it's kind of vertical. Where other areas have dried, you can actually get really beautiful clean marks like here where the branches are. Squeezing it will create a different type of stroke. So here, load that up, place that in underneath. A little bit of spritzer will actually make it move again, which is what we want. That's great, really expressive in there. Perfect. Nice, rich, deep colours. Indigo is actually one of my signature colours as an artist. Those marks that are actually happening in there. Because I just love it. And with Unison, I developed a colour which was called Dark 24, which is a part of my moorland set actually which was beautiful 36 colors uh, but that indigo that dark 24 as part of the midnight set as well is stunning really as we'll be using that a little bit later uh, i just want to get a little bit of the highlights lifted particularly in this sort of area so a little bit of pressure on here you see how much control we've got even though it's vertical and the ink is running so add your highlights by lifting off, placing that glassy effect of our reflection by just literally using the tissue as if you're wiping the surface, but you're just lifting off. I've turned the painting now to a much, much more horizontal angle because I can gain more control. That's uh, great to be able to work at different kind of angles. And because yellow is what I call is a life giver, I'm actually bringing into this diluted inks, working continually over the entire painting at the same time. By building up these foundation levels and glazing with the inks, we're making it behave exactly like watercolour in many respects. So all this wonderful kind of glazing and expression at the same time. And by building the painting together, we can see it as a unifying whole. The large brushes allow you to drop lots of gorgeous colour on. And then we can return to the inks. Bear in mind, this is all the foundation course of your painting. Using the dropper to steer some of that wet ink in there. The tangle of all the foreground. And then we're going to use a hairdryer soon after this. Dry what we've got. And then we're going to start to work on this with our beautiful unison colours. Don't forget our reflection. Lots of colour in there. Be generous with the ink you apply. By lifting out we get some beautifully subtle changes at the bottom here. The tangle of all of those plants together, Mother Nature. Uh, this is a stage of working with some beautiful unison colour directly into the wet inks on the flat surface. 
So as the media is drying, the ink that's underneath, you can see by working with this dark green uh, unison colour here, how you're getting this fantastic range of marks which are both dry and wet and glazing with the pastel. It's great. Big sweeping marks here. Textured surfaces. Paint effects. Work rapidly. Work confidently and with conviction. Building up these lovely little leaves here by just using this. Now, to leave it on the table, you can actually see a tiny bit of pastel. Right, so here what we're going to do is using the pastel as so, is work around the shapes of the leaves. This is called negative painting. Nothing wrong about it. It's just the fact that you are working around the shapes to allow the lighter colours to pop, especially with a darker colour on the top. See how that works very, very effectively for the leaves there. And also we can use the positive areas with the reflection. It's not long when I get fed up with a wrapper on it and have to have it removed so that I can use the full side stroke of the pastel. Carry on with that technique here. Wet in wet, dry on the surface. Great section of marks. So far we've concentrated on putting darks mainly over light areas. This time I'm actually going to use light over the dark as well so that you've got a, a change in, in kind of uh, direction. It's, it's driving the light back into the work. So the side strokes work really well. You can see it works uh, very much like a, a paint pastel into the wet ink. We've not used any hairdryer on it yet. We're moving the ink out of the way with dry pastel. So it's fusing together beautifully. Let's see how that kind of creates that really sense of distance and illusion. Don't forget your reflections and put some pressure behind your pastel strokes. Yellow is a life giver to any painting and what I'm actually doing here is making it look and feel very summery by adding this yellow in just a little bit like that. And you can see all of that fantastic kind of textures I'm using fixative now to deliberately darken areas, just giving you quick blasts of spray like this all over. And it's so that we can restore the surface of the paper. Because it's hot pressed, the tooth is very precious, especially when you build up a lot of pigment on the top. So this is great because we can actually deliberately use it as a drawing aid as well to deliberately darken tone This is a fantastic stage to get to with any kind of painting because it's a beautiful way to be able to assess what's going on and where we can take it next, where the problems are, where the things are that you want to keep. And for me, it's still got those elements in, in this work. And we can point those out to you and how I'm going to correct them with Unison Colour Pastel. The first thing I want to mention is I really don't believe this is dark enough. We have to drop out some of those lights. You can see, if I cover it with my hand, how beautiful and dark it throws the light out. And to make an area look lighter, you have to make an area look dark next to it. I'm not keen on the way this is a severe drop off, even though we've got a soft diffused edge. So I'm going to address those issues again, bring that back in. The willow herb isn't evident enough, which will balance with this. So again, with more opaque pastel, the unison colour pastel, we can apply those sharper colours. I mentioned earlier that to make a dark look darker, place a light next to it. That's exactly what I'm doing here using Green 30, Unison Green 30, to scumble across the surface and pick out some of these fantastic highlights. 
Now, by doing so, you can work and knock out some lines that you don't want and keep other areas in that you do. So we get a sense of distance depending on the marks that you apply. Continuing with this beautiful green light 36 with the window open, it's bringing nature back into the room. Dark 10, unison, dark green 10, scumbled across the surface. I don't want to punch out or lose too many of these lovely greens with the inks behind, but I definitely want to build shape. It's a case of sacrificing some of the marks to make the painting work. I've just picked up this beautiful unison colour A43, this fantastic rich dark green, and it's exactly what the painting needs. Scumbling colour over the inks and into other pastels. It's just fantastic, perfect. Our first marks of the translucency with the inks on the surface are ideal at the moment to use this more opaque unison dark A43 again into these areas to pick out small little pieces of the leaves and in doing so I'm going to move away in a minute so you'll be able to see that and what happens there is working into those shapes that negative drawing area creates the most luminous types of leaves. Great contrast. Slowing down the marks using the same green, it just sort of bounces across the top of the surface. It's almost like a stipple. You can see how colours infuse together. You don't need to move or go diving into all your box of pastels, it's almost like less is more. And that particular colour will change based on the surrounding colours, optically blending it. This makes the darks very intriguing by working green on green. And to make the darker even better and richer, I'm using the dark 24. Indigo, my signature colour. Dark Green 7, just adding that, it's got the intensity of a beautiful, rich, dark ink. So again, adding a few of those marks, expressing that beautiful trees of summer. I mentioned earlier that I didn't really like the drop off that was happening in this bottom corner. So I'm using this uh, dark green again, the same as I was just before, to put the opacity of it and the soft pastel. Confident, sharp marks, build up the lines and all of those little elements. I still want the pink to show through. And again, it's almost red and green, which is complementary. So crimson and ultramarine blue were used as inks together to create this sort of area. But we can help bounce more of that without adding any more ink on. We can use this particular color, which is dark 19. It's a purple, beautiful purple color unison colour just to warm up and join that area perfectly in there. Keeping the warmth in the shadows at the back I'm just using some of this uh, purple again 
to warm up the darks. Okay, these are the final bits of fireworks, sparky colour, with this tiny bit of unison pink here for the Himalayan balsam plant. Just helps to bring the, the warmth back into the foreground and bring this whole section forward, tying everything up. There we go, there's our last mark, signature. I'm really happy with the piece. Hope you've been happy with it too today. Gives you an idea of where we have taken inks and unison colour through a whole process of union to create this really ambiancy, great light and dark and shade through all it. Um, one of the great things about it is at first all those drippy marks that kind of looked a little bit of mess. You can now see there's nothing strange about this. It's come together in a really great way. I'm delighted with it. I hope you are too and uh, see you next time and thank you Unison Colour.